It is my privilege to present the following program that was inspired by the way American businesses and organizations have responded to the events of September 11th. It's part of a special series produced by Heartbeat of America. Having served in the United States Navy for many years, I fully appreciate the important role small and middle-sized businesses play in the very fabric of our country. And I salute the professionals who lead these companies and thus keep America strong. They are the very backbone of our free enterprise system. And today, on this program, you will meet the individuals behind one such organization. I'll be back later in the program to introduce the Keeping America Strong Award. And now, let's learn more about the organization we are honoring today. Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. And I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Since 2001, our television series has been featuring entrepreneurial companies that move our country and our economy forward. Standing by at our studios in Los Angeles is one such company. Welcome. Good to have you with us. All right, let's begin by telling me what you do and who benefits from it. The Millennium Technology Group uh, provides system lifecycle management services to our customers. Everything from the planning and, and architecting and acqu acquisition of technology all the way through its inevitable um, disposal. The goal is to enable our, our, our customers to focus on the delivery of their products and services to their, to their customers while confident that the, uh, their technology infrastructure is reliable and that it's stable and what I like to call economically uh, scalable. Further beyond that, we uh, focus on uh, answering the communication issue within organizations by providing uh, podcasting technology, and lastly, in the education sector, we focus on, on integrating education edu uh, t technology and education through the use of uh, what we call the 21st century classroom. And we do that with our affiliation with Apple Computer and Promethean Interactive Whiteboard. Well, you're obviously successful. So what do you attribute your success to? Any particular philosophies or strategies? Our main philosophy is what we call uh, being a technology concierge. What this involves is obviously being excellent in, in, in the quality of the work that we present, but we go beyond that. We go beyond that in the understanding of our customers to the point of becoming a trusted advisor to them, uh, one that they can depend on, but one that, we can, that proactively can act in their benefit in what we hope to be a long-lasting business relationship. Now, stay with us. There's more to come. Thank you very much, William. Now, continuing from our studio here in Los Angeles, I'm Doug Llewellyn with our guest, who is the president and the CEO of Millennium Technology Group. This company is headquartered in Plantation, Florida. And uh, our guest, again, the president and CEO of the company, his name is Daryl Fort. Daryl, welcome. Nice to have you here. Let me continue on some of the things that you were saying to, uh, to Mr. Shatner. You mentioned something very intriguing, system life cycle management. That's a pretty interesting phrase. What really does that mean? Well, if you think of the life of any technology in a company, there's only certain things that can happen to it. First, you have to plan and acquire it. Then you have to deploy it, you have to get it out there, get it networked, get it put in place. Once it's put in place, well, you have to use it. You have to administer and, ma and, and maintain it, expand it to really get the, the full value of it. And then at some point in time down the road, you have to dispose of it. That's, those are the four stages of system lifecycle management. And each stage brings with it its own challenges. And My Myron Jackson, our Director of Operations, will speak to those challenges later on in the show. Okay. Some other interesting terms that, uh, interesting hearing them in this context, and that is podcasting. I don't normally associate podcasting with what you do. How do you, how do you utilize that? Well, it's interesting. The word podcasting comes from the union of two words, you know, the Apple iPod, which right. we all know and love, right. and broadcasting, which you do. Right. Um, so we put them together and you have a broadcast on the iPod. Now why is this, why is this so unique? If you think about it, um, the ability to videotape a presentation, a, a message from the president of an organization, a school lesson, 
and to be able to take that and then within literally minutes edit it and send it to the internet so that people who need to see it can, they, can then download it, archive it, and utilize it is powerful technology. Now, typically, right now, if, you, if you, the main use of this, many people are using it personally or for other things, but we see very significant uses of this in the business world. Uh, and we like to think that Millennium um, can be the company that helps bring this podcasting, podcasting technology um, to businesses and help them to, to utilize it to augment the communication infrastructure. This is really just to get the company or organization's news out. To people that, that need to know. Well, to people that need to know or, or even want with, to know. Or, or within the organization. Exactly. Um, the, there's a training on a new product for the sales team. That's exactly it. Would you fly them all into one, to one location to, um, to, to have a training class? We can set a podcast out. Right. What's more economical? And, and that almost sounds like it could be an extension of the, another term you use, the 21st century classroom. What is that? It's interesting. When you think of students learning today, they, they really learn differently than we are traditionally accustomed to. The model of the sage on the stage, you know, the teacher up in front of the blackboard, that's really kind of passe. Um, students today um, uh, crave multiple stimuli. I mean, there, there's no big deal to have a, TV, have the, a movie on, listening to their iPods, and studying, um, studying the, uh, for their science test, and actually capturing the information they need in order to, to, um, uh, to do well on the test. That's normal for students today. Well, if that's the case, and you put them into a, a situation where they don't have that stimuli to be, um, to be educated, they won't be engaged. So the 21st century classroom is a classroom with world-class technology in its place, education solutions in place, to engage not the student and the teacher in the education process. We do that through our affiliations with Apple Computer and with Promethean Interactive Whiteboards, both organizations that we believe um, have the best technology and um, software and support uh, in order to uh, make that happen. And this is extensively directed towards students, right? That is correct. Primarily not the business community, it's the schools. No, this, that is our focus in the education yeah. sector. Which is a big aspect of what you do. Yes. Very big. Um, the technology concierge, you have, you've got your own language going here, you know, in your organization. What is that? Really, it's the common thread that um, goes through everything that we do. Um, and it's one of the key differen differentiators of our service to um, other organizations. Um, you can find an organization that will do quality work and, you know, and, and then leave. The basis to be competitive in the market is to do fantastic quality work. So we do that. But we go beyond that. We want to understand our customers to the point where we can become trusted advisors to them, working to their benefit on a daily basis and what we hope to be a long-term relationship. Um, in, and we institutionalize their strategies, their goals. We understand them to the point that we can be, bring that value add to them and proactively I'll work with them in order to make them successful and stick with them through the good times and the bad times for years to come. And then the concierge model really does, answers that and does that. And who are the typical kinds of clients that you're talking about? We're talking about business clients. Um, well, first, you know, we have our roots in education. So right. school districts, for instance, okay. um, are, are a client uh, that, that, that we will, uh, will look at. In the government sector, um, towns, um, cities, government agencies. Um, we've, uh, we've been able to do work in, in those organizations in, in what we call strategic IT planning. That first step, really, of the um, system lifecycle management uh, program um, to help them really look down the road and understand in a holistic way what they will need in their IT um, organization in order to be successful and save money, be economical and efficient in, in doing so. And, the, and in, the, in, the private sector, in the private sector, really helping organizations to look at their IT departments um, in a holistic way. Um, most organizations aren't IT organizations. I mean, their job, what they do, is get their products and services out to their customers. They don't need to be worried about, well, the computers work. They just need to work. And so, you know, one of the things we can bring to them is uh, really outsourcing that entire organization to us, taking care of it for them. You become their IT department. A absolutely. Um, that's one model. Or if they have a model, augment um, their, their, um, their staff, augment their efforts, 
Um, but in, in any case, uh, we want, what we want to do is make sure that we are the least of their worries, that, that, that the IT really just simply works. Because it, it, it must, because the minute it doesn't, the minute that breaks down, yep. costing them time, costing them money, costing them frustrations, um, and that's not the goal of business. Very, very interesting indeed. Now, you're headquartered in Plantation, Florida. Where is Plantation, by the way? Plantation, Florida is a, is a town right next to Fort Lauderdale. Okay. So you're like a suburb of Florida. Yeah, exactly. So geographically, what area do you serve? Is it primarily Florida? Well, to date, it has been primarily Florida. Mm -hmm. in, in our education sector, we're throughout the state. Um, and we're growing our business really um, um, uh, in, the, in the South Florida and the Florida region. But we're looking to go outside the borders of Florida. And if you look at our IT outsourcing business, and our capability to do mass deployments, specifically of the uh, Promethean installations, of, of helping organizations deploy their technologies um, on a nationwide basis. Right. We're actually doing that now. <clears throat> and we have those capabilities to do that very, um, and we do it very well. So what is the Millennium Technology Group like? Describe your organization for me. Well, I'll tell you. Um, it's, we are a young, mobile, flexible organization that really focuses on, on providing excellent service to our clients. Um, the people that we bring on board, we, seem to, we, we seek to develop them, right. to grow them, um, so that their time with us is well spent and that it is um, uh, a benefit to them and to the people that we serve. Um, we're in, we, we're in business, we have a cause, we have a passion for what we do. I mean, we, we, we began in education, I mean, that's where, where, it all, it where it all kind of started. Yeah. Uh, with a goal really to deploy and integrate technology in education um, to the benefit of the students um, and, and, and the educators. Really, what, what you see is the minute the utilization of technology breaks down in the education process, teaching and learning starts to break down. And that just can't happen. And so there's a, there is a care and a detail that must take place in making sure that the technology works so that teacher can use it in developing in, in delivering that core curriculum so those, teacher, those students can be engaged and they can learn and really get the benefit out of what, what's happening. Take that same methodology, that same ideology, and that same passion and apply it to the government sector. Apply it to the, to the private sector. If technology doesn't work, yeah. when, how, then how do you serve your constituents? If the technology doesn't work, then how do you deliver your services and your product on a timely basis in an economic fashion? And so that's what we're all about, re really working the customers to have that success. That's a, that's a good explanation. I know the company's only five years old, but you've grown, you know, you've, you've grown to the point you have over 20 employees full-time covering the state of Florida fairly much so. We're going to get much deeper into what you do with the heads of, the, of this organization's departments who really handle it. Podcasting, for example, and other parts. And we'll be back to do that in just a moment. We're continuing now our discussion of the Millennium Technology Group. This organization is headquartered in Plantation, Florida. We've been joined by two other executives of the organization. On my left, I'd like you to meet now James Ernestine. He is the Apple account manager and uh, is also involved heavily in training. And on his left, Myron Jackson, who's the director of business operations. Both of these gentlemen have two different kind of categories of, of uh, uh, of this company that they fill and, and head up. So let me focus with you, James, first and talk to you a little bit about some of the areas that you deal heavily with. Number one, communication. That's a lot of comes under your jurisdiction. Talk to me about that aspect of what you do. Well, communication is the base of pretty much every successful organization. And the most important part of communication that we believe is the audio and visual communication. And this right. is where podcast is important. And, well, to give you a, co a couple examples, podcasting um, in the education space, we'll see a teacher in the past only had the ability to do best practices with the staff they currently have at the school. But with podcasting, you can get um, that professional development as well as the best practices via podcasting throughout the entire world. So this is really a kind of a form of education for the educator. Is that exactly. what it, that you're talking about, rather than using podcasting in the classroom? Correct. And also, uh, this enables the educator to extend the learning day because the educator can make the podcast available to the student to take home. 
Okay, if it's appropriate for them. Exactly. Okay. Now, that all comes under part of the 21st century classroom, I guess, you know, right? That's correct. Because that's a no, oh. another whole area you talk about. What about podcasting for business? Well, podcasting for business is pretty much the same, <clears throat> except instead of having that classroom of individuals, you'll see whereas uh, in the business sector, you'll see uh, a business professional, that needs to get a speech or a training out to virtual or uh, remote field sales right. representatives. And either everyone could come in for that, or you can have that recorded and podcasted out throughout those individuals. I guess the key is, do you show them how to do this? Is this part of the service you provide? That is part of a service we do provide. We can show them. If they don't have the staff available, we can do it for them, record it, edit it, and disseminate the product very quickly, rapidly. I mean, as the Apple account manager, what does that mean that, that you're actually handling? And how much of the work that you do, you know, and the equipment you work with, is Apple-oriented versus PC-oriented? Well, the Apple account manager, what that comes from is we do a lot of work with Apple. And we have engineers that, you know, go out to different, I guess, counties, cities, and, and do different things for Apple. Clients who use Apple. Right? Exactly. Right. And mainly that's been in our education space. Okay. They're big in the Apple. Right. Apple's big in the, in the educational field. Correct. Okay. I understand you're a whiz on the Mac, right? So everybody needs his phone number if they have a problem. But you don't have problems with Macs, right? Not that I know of. <laughs> Let me turn uh, to Myron. Myron, talk to me a little bit about, uh, as the Director of Business Operations, what comes under your jurisdiction? Well, as... Uh, uh, most companies uh, uh, implement the systems lifestyle management model. Uh, my job is to take all four uh, uh, segments of the system lifestyle management model and implement them. So I'm involved in the planning process. Uh, I'm involved in uh, deployment of the equipment after, after the planning process takes place. Uh, I'm also involved in maintenance if the customer decides he wants maintenance and administration of, of their equipment. And then, of course, the last segment, uh, disposal. If the customer decides uh, he has equipment that's no longer needed and uh, our, our guys are capable of, of showing them how to dispose of, of uh, old equipment. So you deliver and set up the new equipment that, that your company arranges, is that right? That, that's correct. Um, our, our staff uh, is, is involved with one or all of the different segments of systems lifestyle management. So, so you handle the installation. What about training? Is that part of what you handle? Training is not typically what I handle. Uh, it's typically part of what James handles. You would handle that? Right. Okay. And. Uh, and then the structure, that's another word that is connected with what you do. The structure meaning what? Well, in, in every organization, um, whether you're, you're planning for the future or you're implementing solutions, uh, there, there's a structure for planning uh, so that you're, you're uh, planning the right amount of equipment. Um, all, all uh, companies, all organizations are typically resource limited or funds limited, limited to, to, to uh, how much money they can spend. For sure, absolutely. And uh, information technology, you can spend the sky's the limit. Yep. And so what we offer the customer is a structured approach to uh, determining uh, exactly what you need, exactly what, what equipment you need to use um, as part of the planning phase and uh, a, a, a high-level structure on actually implementing what you've bought and purchased so that it's uh, efficient, efficiently used uh, for, for what it was intended. That was a very interesting explanation. Let me ask you something. Any, any great success stories or challenges that come to your mind that uh, you know, you've faced and that you've, you've successfully met? Well, the, the, the story that comes to mind for me is uh, on, on joining, when I joined uh, Millennium Group, uh, we deployed uh, 30,000 laptops, uh, about 200 Apple servers, about 220 uh, IBM servers, yeah. and we did it in a three-week time period. 
uh, as well as um, uh, we, we took uh, and disposed of uh, about 20,000 um, pieces of equipment also from the Broward County. That you were replacing. So you were upgrading a lot of systems, right? That's correct. 30,000, that's a lot. That's a big job. And it, hooking them up and making sure they work? It was a full-blown uh, production of um, imaging. Uh, yeah. we, we actually went into a warehouse. Uh, we imaged 30,000 computers at a rate that was unbelievable. We had a factory running within the warehouse 24 hour uh, a day for, for three weeks. And uh, we deployed uh, across 250 schools, uh, 30,000 laptops, 1,500 wireless carts, uh, 5,000 printers, uh, all in a three week time period. Wow, boy, that's, that's, that's a challenge indeed, no question. What's your background, by the way? Um, I, I um, have about 30 years, 32 years of uh, in, uh, information technology, technology background, right. um, where I've deployed uh, small, medium, and large systems uh, of, of everything you can imagine from PCs to cellular to paging uh, in the U.S. and in other countries. So you're really, really very knowledgeable about this, this business. From the tech